You know, I was just thinking, Colonel Tim. Yep? If I get a few more little people to work with you in the act, it might be better entertainment. Whatever you say, Mr. Edwards. Say, I know someone who might do. A young lady. A lady, Midget? How tall is she, Tim? Oh, about my size, 33 inches. Uh-huh, that's not bad. We could bill you two as the smallest Mr. and Mrs. in the world. Sure. I'll think it over. But right now, let's get on with our rehearsal. Okay. Take your song from the middle. I'll give you a pickup. Here. Here. In our literal village And I guess you all have learned That it really is a small world As far as we're concerned I've taken you through shiny town My eeny meeny miny town Now we say to tiny town Goodbye Ah, that's swell, Colonel Tim <laughs> Billy Edwards and company I like the sound of that You, La Belle Louise and her trapeze Andy Anderson, the human giant And Duke Miller and his magic not bad, not bad. Sounds good to me. Think of it, Tim. Two more weeks of rehearsal and six months in theater's book solid. If all goes well, we could go on the road two weeks from Tuesday. Yes, Mr. Edwards. But that is, if all goes well. <laughs> Homicide Department, Sergeant Heath speaking. Sergeant Heath, this is Jennings. I'm the janitor of the rehearsal building on Kearney Street. Hurry over, please, Sergeant. Please come right away. Okay, Jennings, take it easy. Tell me what happened. A man's been shot, and he's lying on the floor of one of the rooms. Hurry, Sergeant, hurry. Be right there. You, you know the man's name? Edwards. Billy Edwards. Hurry, please hurry. Don't touch anything, and don't leave till I get there. Be up in five minutes. <laughs> Our friend, the district attorney, should either not have an office on the eighth floor or else see to it that the elevators in this building run all night. Oh, right, Vance. I'll suggest that to Mr. Markham, Ellen. Stairs a little wearying for you? I'm allergic to them. Eighth floor. At last. Mr. Markham's office. Finally. <laughs> That's you, Vance? Right. And it's me, Ellen. Hello, you two. Hello. Sorry to get you down here at this hour, Vance, but I thought you'd be sorrier if I hadn't. Oh. I'm fairly certain I would be. What is this, Markham? What did you mean when you told me on the phone that there hadn't been a murder yet? I meant there still hasn't been one. But there has been a shooting. A theatrical manager and pianist named Billy Edwards had been shot when I call you. He's at the hospital, unconscious and in pretty bad shape. Just a shooting? I don't see why you called Vance. You'd never have forgiven me if I hadn't, Ellen. Vance, Edwards was rehearsing a vaudeville act featuring a midget, Colonel Tim. Mm -hmm. And he was shot with a midget gun. We found the gun. It's no more than two inches long. Could a gun that size mortally wound a man? Very possibly, Ellen. That type of weapon was invented in France. It uses a tiny pellet quite capable of killing a man if fired at close range and into a vulnerable spot. I imagine if Edwards recovers, Markham, he'll be able to tell you who shot him. Unquestionably, if he recovers. I see what you mean. Who else was in the act Edwards was preparing? In addition to the midget, there was a trapeze performer named Louise, a giant named Anderson, and a magician named Miller. A modified circus troupe, eh, Markham? Yes. Well, it does sound different. What was found on Edwards? Anything interesting? The usual things, except for money. Edwards had more than $700 in cash in his pocket. Really? Markham, I want to thank you. For bringing you in on this case, Vance? Yes, of course. And I'd also like to thank you to see that no word of Mr. Edwards' condition gets into the newspapers. Still time to do that? Yes, Vance. You see, I'm beginning to understand how you work. I specifically asked Heath not to release any information. Thank you. Now, if you'll tell me where I can find the people who are supposed to be in Mr. Edwards' act, I'll replace our talking with some action. <laughs> Louise, why not team up with me? Even if Edwards gets better, it'll be months before he puts our act on the road now. No, Duke. I don't think it's right. I just don't. And I don't either. 
The least we can do is wait for Mr. Edwards to get better. Maybe he ain't gonna get better. And what happens? We lay off for months. The way I see it, Louise, you and me and the midget here, we got the same act. I'm sorry, Duke, Don't but I... give me no buts, pretty one. I've been nice and quiet, and I've been trying to show you it'd be smart to send the act out without Edwards. But if you're going to make me get tough, where you going, Runt? Out. Just out. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> you know, I think he worshipped you, Louise. He didn't like the way I was talking to you. Now, let's get back to what you were saying. You were going to get tough. How tough? Not the way you think, baby doll. This way. Suppose the cops were to know Bill Edwards was in love with you when they found out there was a Mrs. Edwards. You're pretty low, Duke. You'd tell him, wouldn't you? I don't know. I don't know anything, except all of us ought to team up and take over those booking Edwards got. Now, I ain't a bad guy, baby, if I'm treated right. Try me out and see. I always had a yen for you. Keep away from me, Duke. Keep away from me. Oh, so that's the way you want it. All right, maybe I can... There, you know, That Andy. midget brought See? the giant with that's him. That's why I went for you. Don't let him do anything to Louise. Mix you up. What boy. is this here? He bother you, Louise? Well, uh, look, Andy, I... Well, I was just kind of talking... He like bother I... you, Louise? He bother you, Louise? I break him in half. No... No, Andy, please. Please, it's all right. She told you, Andy. I, I didn't do nothing. She told you that. You heard her. Now keep away from me. Don't, Andy. Don't. Don't, Andy. Don't, Andy. Don't, Andy. You open Andy, door. Sure, Andy. No. Come on. Now oh, I throw the skunk no. out door. Now get your hands off me. You're well, me. this is a very pretty picture. Do you mind if I interrupt it a moment? Who are you? My name is Vance, Philo Vance. I want to see all of you about the shooting of Bill Edwards. I throw him out, Louise. No, Andy, no. Don't throw anybody out. Mr. Vance, we've already answered all the questions the police asked us. I know. But I wanted to meet all of you socially before I uncovered evidence that will send one of you to prison for a long, long time. Did you find anything, Mr. Markham? No, nothing, Heath. Well, let's keep looking. This apartment isn't very large. No. I'm sure there's something here that'll give us a lead on who shot Edwards. Oh, that's his picture there on the piano. Nice looking fella. Probably his wife next to him, huh? Probably. Hmm, it's quite pretty. Hope she doesn't mind what we're doing to her apartment when she returns here. Uh -huh. Oh, uh, Heath, have you followed Vance's instructions about keeping Edwards' condition out of the newspapers? Sure, sure I did. D.A., do I have to keep on taking orders from him? Heath, we haven't done badly by taking suggestions from Vance in the past, have we? No, only this is just a routine case, D.A. God, I guess that's it. Nothing left to look into except that trunk in the corner. Yes, well, let's look in that. Oh, come on over. We'll do it together. Okay. Sure wish Mrs. Edwards would get here. If we can't find anything, maybe at least she'd tell us something. Huh. Trunk's not locked. That's something. Yes. Uh, seems to be stuck, though. Help me, will you, D.A.? Sure. Uh, uh, there. Holy mackerel. Look what's in it. Mrs. Edwards. Look at her neck, D.A. Those red marks. She's been choked to death. Yes. By somebody with very powerful hands. Choked to death and crammed into this trunk. Uh. Heath, I don't know what Mrs. Edwards might have been able to tell us. All I know is she'll never tell us now. I'm sorry, I can't connect you with Mr. Vance's private office. He gave me instructions that he wasn't to be disturbed. Well, I'll have him call you just as soon as he's free. Goodbye. Now, let's see. Me want to see Vance. Uh, oh, oh well, I, I, I'm very sorry, but uh, Mr. Vance isn't seeing anybody. Um... <laughs> uh, you must be the giant in Mr. Edwards' act. That's right. Yes. Vance here? Yes, as a matter of fact, he is. He's in that office there. He's talking to Colonel Tim, the midget. If you'd care to wait, I'm sure he'll be glad to see you when he's through. Me no wait. Me go in now. Hey, wait a minute. You can't do that. That door's locked and besides, you can't see him, I said. Me don't care what you say. Me take care of locked door like this. Hey! Well, really, what, what do you think, Andy? Well, what are you doing here? Well, Mr. Anderson... 
Oh, nice goodness. of you to break in to see me. Vance, shall I call the police? I not think not, here. Ellen. Better go back to your office. Andy, you shouldn't have come here. You broke Mr. Vance's door. Me break lots of things, maybe. He bother you, Tim? No, no, Andy, not at all. He's our friend. Our friend, Andy. You see, Ellen, I'm their friend. Now, please go on back while I find out what other reason Mr. Anderson had for breaking in on me. Okay, Vance. Only there are an awful lot of funny things happening around here. Well, Colonel Tim, would you like to continue? Well, I... I think not, Mr. Vance. Not now. Andy, I'm trying to help Mr. Vance find out who shot Mr. Edwards. I just told him that he used to lend money to people in show business. You tell him that? Yep. Why? Well, because it might help Mr. Vance find out who shot Mr. Edwards. Uh, what it did, actually, was account for the large amount of cash in Mr. Edwards' pockets, Mr. Anderson. Merely that and nothing else, yet. Uh, Duke Miller, he tell me Mr. Vance want you in his office, Tim. I think maybe he do something to you I do not like. I come here. <laughs> no. Well, um, Mr. Vance, there's nothing more I have to tell you. But uh, maybe you'll tell me something. How's Mr. Edwards feeling? Well, I'd say he's doing as well as can be expected. He still not talk? He's not conscious, Mr. Anderson, if that's what you mean. Well, come on, Andy. Come back with me to the hotel. All right. Oh, uh, uh Mr. Vance, I'm sorry about the door Andy broke. If you let me know how well, much Don't it... worry about it, Colonel Tim. Come on, we go to hotel. Come sure. on, Tim. Goodbye, Mr. Vance. I'm sorry I couldn't be of any help to you. Well, that's all right. Thank you for the information you did give me. Goodbye. Bye. Uh, come on. Ellen. Oh, coming, Vance. Well, that was quite a little party you had here. Oh, it was nothing, really. Quite an informal gathering, I assure you. They've gone. Very much so. Thank goodness. Did you find out anything? Well, I'll tell you this. I spoke to Duke Miller and Louise, the trapeze performer, at their hotel rooms. Yes. The giant and the little fellow here. Now, I've come to the conclusion that any one of the four could have shot Edwards. Well, you're certainly going out on a limb there, Vance. And so far as the weapon used is concerned, the midget pistol, it might have been fired by any of the four. Same limb, only a little further out this time. Hey, anybody at home in there? Markham, come on in. Well, what went on in here? Brawl? Who broke this glass, Vance? Hello, Markham. Well, not exactly a brawl. A giant came into my office without bothering to open the door. <laughs> it was really the door's fault. It hit him first. <laughs> Vance, I, uh, I've got some news for you. Mrs. Edwards has been murdered. Really? Mrs. Edwards? How, by another midget gun? No, she was strangled to death. Heath and I found her an hour ago. Someone with a powerful pair of hands was responsible, we're certain. There should be very little question about that. Time of death, Markham. Yesterday afternoon, the medical examiner says... Mm. Well, then she was killed before her husband was shot. Well, that might mean something, Vance. Everything in this case might mean something, if I only knew what... Markham, the midget gun used to shoot Edwards belonged to Colonel Tim. He just told me that. He said somebody stole it from him. He also said that Edwards used to lend money to performers at high interest rates. A show business, Shylock. Well, now I've heard everything. So Mrs. Edwards was strangled. Hmm. Well, I'll see you both soon. Where are you going, Vance? Out. Please excuse me, Markham. I'll only be about an hour if you care to wait. Vance, there are several things we ought to discuss. Later, Markham. I won't be too long. You see, I just thought of something. Goodbye. <coughs> you think you go somewhere, Mr. Vance? I beg your pardon, but that's my neck. You have your arm around, Mr. Anderson. Vance, you keep away from us. Sir? You no bother me, <coughs> Colonel Tim or Louise, or even Duke. <coughs> keep away, Vance. We <coughs> no like you bother any of us. Understand? This is District Attorney Markham. When Billy Edwards, theatrical manager, was found shot by a midget pistol, Philo Vance uncovered four suspects. A midget, a giant, a trapeze performer, and a magician. Then Edwards' wife was found dead strangled. None of the suspects knows what condition Billy Edwards is in because Advance's request, all information other than the fact that he has as yet not talked, has been withheld. I have been informed that Sergeant Heath has picked up Andy Anderson, the giant, and is questioning him at this moment. They are having a bit of... <laughs> well, look, how many of you guys does it take to hold him down? Yeah, that's better. 
Okay, Anderson, you're a big guy, a giant. But you could also be a murderer. Me no murderer. Now, this is the way I figure it. Edwards, the guy who was shot, was married. All right, maybe he isn't dead, but his wife is. I figure you strangled her with those big hands of yours because you were going to kill Edwards and she knew you'd threatened him in the past. Why I kill anybody? You try to make fool of me. I not let you... Hey, guys, hold, yeah. him in there. hold him in that chair. Don't let him get up. You want to know why you tried to kill Edwards? I'll tell you. You were in love with Louise, the trapeze performer. You knew Edwards was playing around with her, so you tried to knock him off. All right, I know a way to get you to talk. Murphy! Yes? Bring in that girl, Louise. She's in the next office. Right. I can't. Come on, come on in here, Miss LaBelle Louise. Okay. Sit right down there. That's right. Well, what do you want with me? You're the reason this giant won't talk. Make him open up. Make him confess he killed Mrs. Edwards and tried to kill Edwards. Andy. Me say nothing. Please, Andy, if you know anything to help the police, tell them. I keep quiet because of you. Yes, I know. I know, Andy. You want me to talk? I talk. Yes. This what I see. Yes, Andy. Night before Mr. Edwards is shot, I see you with little gun. Same kind as what killed Mr. Edwards. This I no want to tell police. You even have same gun with you now. This? Uh. Oh, is this the gun you mean? Yeah. This one on my charm bracelet? Yes. Oh, Andy. <laughs> Look, Sergeant Eve, it's perfectly harmless, isn't it? I see. Yeah. Oh, sure, sure. That's just a toy. Me thought maybe... Maybe I shot Mr. Edwards? Huh. No, Andy, I didn't. Sergeant Heath, how is Mr. Edwards, and when can we see him? He's still unconscious. All this questioning may mean nothing if he's ever able to tell us who shot him. You can go, Louise. Oh, thank you. And, um, Andy? No, I want him here for a little while. Some more questions I just dreamed of. Uh, I see you later, Louise. Yes, of course. Goodbye. Louise. What? Oh. Did I startle you, Louise? I'm very sorry. Well, my nerves are a little on edge, Mr. Vance. Louise, I've got to know something. I'm pretty certain, as Sergeant Heath is, that our giant friend, Andy Anderson, is in love with you. And that Colonel Tim, the midget, worships you. Oh, well, I like them both, Mr. Vance. They're really wonderful people. I'm sure they are. And I'm sure that our magician, Duke Miller was very eager to become a very good friend of yours, too. I gathered that from outside your apartment yesterday when I met all of you for the first time. Oh, I see what you mean. You think that because they all like me and I like Mr. Edwards that they might have tried to kill him and had some other reason for murdering Mrs. Edwards. Is that right? Yes. All of them apparently wanted something from you. Your affection. Oh, I want something, too, Louise. I want your help in finding which one shot Edwards. Take it from the middle, Tim, once more. You've seen our little village, and I guess you all have learned that this really is a small world as far as we're concerned. I've taken you to shiny town, my eeny, meeny, miny town. Now we say to tiny town, goodbye. That's got nothing, you know that. Look, I play the same notes Edwards plays. Why don't you sell that song the way you did for him? I don't know. I just can't. Maybe I know a way. Tim, how much money did you borrow from Edwards? I didn't borrow from him. Don't give me that. I got a look at his notebook the last time I paid him some of the dough I owe him. He kept track of all the dough he loaned, guys. Your name was right above mine. I just don't remember the amount. How much was it? A few hundred dollars. I was going to pay him back when we started to work. You don't have to pay him back if he kicks off, do you? I don't want him to die. Then why did you shoot him? Me? I didn't. I never did. You can't go around saying things like that. Why, I'll... You'll what, Midge? Shoot me, too? You owed him money, and you wanted Louise. 
You shot him. Yeah, you stole my little gun and you killed him. Who is it? Hello? Oh, Mr. Vance. What do you want here, Vance? Well, I just want to tell both of you that we just got rather good news from the Essex Hospital. Billy Edwards is doing rather well. He's expected to regain consciousness sometime tonight. I've already told Andy Anderson and Louise, so you don't have to bother. And you won't have to worry about any more questioning. Because when Edwards comes to, he'll tell us who shot him. Is it all right if I go into Mr. Edwards' room with these flowers? No, ma'am. Nobody gets into this hospital room, that's my orders. But I'm a nurse. I know you're a nurse. And what harm could you do? How do I know what harm you or anybody could do in there? All I know is I'm God here to see that nobody gets in Mr. Edwards' room. Very well. There's a patient up on the next floor who'll appreciate these. I'll take them up to her. Do what you like. You could save me one of them, though. I could take it home to the wife. <laughs> Officer, officer, I'm a doctor here. Please come downstairs. Next floor, there's a patient of mine getting violent. I can't restrain him. Please come help me. I can't, Doc. I'm on duty here outside this door. I gotta stay here. But this man's violent, officer. I got him tied to the bed with the sheets. He's gonna break loose at any moment. Please come down with me. Nothing can be more important than stopping a potential maniac from getting loose. Oh? Well, I guess this is an emergency. And in an emergency, I'm supposed to forget orders and use my head. Nobody will be coming in here. Not in this room, anyhow. Lead the way, Doc. Right this way, officer. Down these stairs. If we hurry, we can get there in time. I mustn't put on the light. No, no, I mustn't. That figure on the bed, that must be Billy. He mustn't recover consciousness. This knife will make sure that he never does. All right, Heath, put that light switch oh, on. Right. Oh. Hello, Louise. Completing some unfinished business. Mr. Vance. And Sergeant Heath, whom you've met, of course, but not exactly in this manner. Yeah. Well, that was quite a cute way you got rid of the officer outside in order to fall for this plan of mine. Who was it helped you, Duke? Sure it was Duke. I had him turning cartwheels. He'd do anything for me. Just as you'd do anything for Billy Edwards, including murder. Uh, My guess is you killed his wife. He wouldn't marry you in spite of that. He turned you down. So you borrowed the little gun that Colonel Tim carried and used it on Edwards. Mm, you're too smart, Vance. Do you forget that I still have this knife? Now I'm going to use it on you. Oh, no, no, you <laughs> don't. Yes, I am. Come you on can't now. Get away with the double door. Like I open it up, will you, Vance? I get a cop right outside. Oh, pleasure. Thank you, she devil. Get out that door while I get out. All right. All right, boys, take her away. All right, I got it. Right, okay, on. Vance, we got her. You can shut that door in this case anytime you like now. No, I'm sorry, Mr. Vance is not in. Goodbye. See what I'm doing for you now, Vance? Becoming a prevaricator. Is that good? Well, it isn't bad when I tell people you're not in so that you can have a little relaxation. <laughs> Vance, what gave you the idea that La Belle Louise was the murderer in the midget murder case? She did. My investigations proved that each of the four suspects involved had motive and opportunity. And the girl actually made no mistakes that pointed the finger at her. Oh, so you had to let her convict herself? Something like that. I had an idea we might run into a stalemate on this case. That's why I asked Markham at the beginning not to make any announcement of Billy Edwards' physical condition. How is he, by the way? And incidentally, you took quite a chance on Edwards' life, letting Louise loose in his room with a knife just to prove she tried to kill him once before, didn't you? There was nobody in that room, Ellen. Edwards has been dead for two days. Huh? He died soon after he was brought to the hospital. But that was something I didn't want the murderer to know. <laughs> or me either, apparently. Mm hmm You know something, Vance? You know what threw me off? The strangling of Mrs. Edwards. I knew it had to be somebody with a powerful pair of hands, and I thought of the giant right away. Louise was an aerial performer, Ellen, remember? She hung by her hands, did tricks with her hands and arms. They were very well developed. Mm, too bad her imagination wasn't. Of course, I know why she went to the hospital with that knife. 
She thought Edwards was still alive and that she had to kill him before he recovered consciousness and told the police that it was she who'd shot him. I hoped that's what she would think. I didn't know she'd get Duke to help her, but I imagined she'd need and could get some assistance. Well, the midget murder case was simply another example of the fury that lies within a woman scorned. Hmm. That's something you might remember, oh brilliant one. Any time you begin some other romance, I mean. <laughs> At the moment, I'm not concerned with beginning anything. <laughs> right now, Ellen, I'm serene, content, and quite pleased with the end of the midget murder case. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.